All right, hey, welcome back to the Unity 3D C Sharp Prim's Maze tutorial. Now, first off, I want to do a quick something. Um, I notice every time you you start the game, uh, whether you're pressing play and or pressing F1, um, well, let's say if you change the grid size to something crazy like 100 by 100. You press play, then the grid is not centered, um, <laughs> if it loads, hold on, um, hmm, there we go, sorry that fits in, um, the camera's not centered, it should actually be somewhere, I think it's at, it should be at like 50, 50, with a size of 100 also, I mean, that's okay, um, but definitely not what it's at by default, which is, uh, zero, zero, twenty or something. That's definitely not enough. So let's go ahead and fix that really quickly. Um, if we go ahead and get into the script again, um, I'll have here on create grid. I'm gonna look at my camera. So camera dot main camera um, dot uh, transform dot position. Um, it's going to equal. Okay. Uh, we want it to be centered. So I'm going to reference the center, the center point on the grid. So in this 100 by 100, that's taking forever to start for some reason. Um, I swear this wasn't happening. Yeah. Anyway, um, 100 by 100, we should be looking at 49, 49 or something. 50, 50. There it is. So let me scroll here to find 49, 49. Here we are. Um, yeah, so here's the center, or just about the center. And we want our camera to be looking right there. That would be ideal. So to do that, um, we're going to have it equal grid. Open parentheses size dot x uh, divided by two size dot z divided by two and let's see if that works. Now I know there's going to be some problems here, right? Like this one, um, cannot convert type float to int. Yeah, let me make this larger um, because the last video I weren't able to see very well. And I do apologize for that. So, uh, to fix this problem here, where it says cannot convert type float to int, um, I'm going to need, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's several problems there. I need to convert this into an integer. So I do it by casting this as an int. Actually, we're probably going to have to do this. So, so that the int applies to all of this. Then also, I'm just referencing the transform. I need to reference the position. Okay, so now if I save that, there's going to be another error. Or, um, not a compiler error, but just a logic error. Let me turn this back down for a little bit. We're going to have a logic error, and that's that we can't see anything. Now, if we go ahead and look at our camera, it's going to be right on top. Well, it's going to have the same position as this center piece. And we actually want it to be a little higher. Since it's on top, it can't see anything. So if we raise this uh, Y position up any, because we're using an orthographic camera, um, it doesn't matter how high up it is, as long as it's higher than what it's looking at. So um, we have the position here because our new lens is so big. Um, we're going to raise it up a little bit also. So vector 3.up is um, just the up direction. I'm going to have b times 20. It doesn't really matter since we're using it. Yeah. So now everything should be centered. Go ahead and start the game again. You'll see that the grid, well, the camera starts in the center of the grid. Um, if I go ahead and change it to 5.5, five, same thing. I change it to something ridiculous like 55, 
should start at the middle. Yeah. All right. So um, now what we need to do is get centered. However, we should make um, a system where we uh, change this camera's orthographic size because let's say I put this at 100 by 100 again um, we're going to be centered on the, well, the middle piece on the grid however it's not going to be zoomed out correctly so it would be nice if it was zoomed out correctly um, so I'm going to try and fix that real quick yeah like this um, Good size would be oh it's like Oh. Size 55 for 100. Even. So, okay. Um, we'll just see how this works. So, like this in camera dot camera dot uh, or graphic size equals uh, max f dot max of size dot x. Size.c. So it's going to take whichever one's the highest and going to use that as the orthographic size. And I'll divide this by 2 and add 5. So I'm not sure if that's going to work in all cases, but it should work for us. Okay. Now let's try this with some different cases, like 5 5. Okay, that looks pretty good. 10, 10. That looks pretty decent. Maybe a little bit too much outside space, but not really a big deal. Yeah, okay, so this should work. Anyway, if you look at that again, we're just using this simple formula. Now, I want to start getting into some other stuff, but I already used five minutes just for that. That's pretty sad. Um, Okay, so what we want to do to actually start using Prim's algorithm is we need to set a starting position. So if you look on this grid, um, we need to choose a starting location for the minimum spanning tree that we're going to get from Prim's algorithm. So uh, just for my testing, I usually put it at zero, 0, So let's go ahead and use that as a start, and then we can make it customizable. Or actually, uh, the way I'm going to show you is going to make it customizable whenever, but as a default, we're going to set it to start at zero zero. So this right here, this corner piece, bottom left. Okay. So to do that, we have a new function in the start. It's going to be set start, and we're going to have the grid zero zero. Now we have a new function. We're going to set start. Oops, no space there. And it's going to take in a transform. Um, I'll just call it input or start. We need to start. Okay, now. Um, oh, you know what? I also need. I also need several lists. So since we're going to be using lists for Prim's algorithm now, um, we're going to need to add in this system stop collections like we did in cell scripts. I'm going to create public list or transform. And I'm going to call it set. So this set is going to have all the points that we've opened. Now I'm going to use some terminology from Prim's algorithm, so um, and I'm not really going to explain it because I think that would take too long. There's a lot of really good resources out there. Go ahead and just check out the Wikipedia page once again. I urge you to do that. And that will explain the process of what's going on, and I'll stick to explaining how to execute the concepts. Okay, so we have this public list transform set. And I'm running out of time, so I'll have the next segment just in a bit. Okay, thanks.